Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on Sunday night. I thank the Lord that God is on the throne. Yes. Whether the saints do well or if the saints don't do well, God is still on the throne. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God always makes a touchdown. Right. Amen. When we need him, he always comes through for us. I'm thankful that we serve a God that does not have ups and downs like human beings do. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. It's so good to be in this place. Um, Sister Brenda Lejeune is going to come. Uh, we have Missions Sunday. Our offering tonight will go toward missions unless they're otherwise designated. Uh, they will go toward missions. We're excited about what the Lord is doing around the globe. And could you lend your ears to hear what the Lord is doing tonight? Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the, Lord. the Lord told his disciples to go out and preach the word to the to the world at that time, and they did. And it's so and it's continued to do that, all these disciples, and we're his disciples. Yes. And, yes. and it's our duty to go out and spread the word of God. But we spread out in our areas, our comfort zones, which is our families, our neighborhoods, our co-workers, friends. But there are some that are chosen and this decide to follow the Lord's wishes and go beyond their comfort zones. Right. They go yeah. into different countries and different areas to preach his word. Amen. And here's a few of the things that are going on around the world in the global missions. Yeah. Brother and Sister Benson in Benin report that after seven long months of med medical leave, Brother Benson received the all clear to return to the field with no health restrictions. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That is awesome. We were thrilled to arrive back in Benin on July 18th. We sincerely thank you for your prayers and continued financial support during this difficult time. We rejoice with the revivals taking place across Benin. In the last few months, we've had four new churches open. Amen. Praise the Lord for the growth Amen. there. Amen. During a revival in late July, 121 were baptized in Jesus' name. And 32 Amen. are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord is working there. Amen. And brother, I mean, Sister Colleen Carter reports from Gabon that what a time of rejoicing as the nations from West Africa's subregion could finally come together and worship our great Savior. So many countries have been shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and we were thirsty for fellowship. We give God praise for the 14 countries represented within the over 200 attendees. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Throughout the service, throughout the services, 10 have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. And at least two were baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is a wonderful experience to witness a life transformed by the Almighty, the power of the Almighty God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Fiji, brother and sister Wicket report that we had the privilege of flying to the island of Tavuni. Over three days, we saw 51 filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. and 23 Amen. baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is working there in Fiji. Then three were baptized and filled. Then I lost my place. Then three were filled and one baptized at a marriage seminar. Wow. Amen. So the, the Lord can work anywhere. Yes, He can. We rejoiced as we gathered together and ministered at the Central District Conference in the capital of Suave, Fiji. 53 were filled with the Holy Ghost and 61 were baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is working over there. And we have a report from the North American missions. And this is from Brother and Sister Grant, who uh, you know, have the career church, their career, career church planners in Quebec City. Their new chapel is ready. Amen. After several months of renovations, our in-house chapel is now complete. Church facility space is very difficult to obtain in Quebec, so we winterized an 800-square-foot addition to our home. Behind the chapel, we have a prayer room with a portable baptistry. Amen. Although Amen. we cannot advertise this publicly as a church, we can use it for private gatherings as church members invite their friends. In the last couple of months, we have had 15 visitors. We are grateful Amen. to all those who contributed Amen. to this project. Amen. And God bless you. Amen. The Lord is working not only overseas, but locally and, and in the North American missions. 
Amen. And he, he, the missionaries all need our support in prayer and also financially. Amen. So we ask you to keep them in your prayers and to open up your pocketbooks. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is on the move. Yes, he is. He's on the move. And I'm so glad to be serving a God that is not dead, has not lost his hearing, and not, has not lost his ability to see what our needs are and care about what our needs are. And, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for what God is doing. I'm thankful that God has given us permission and given us the, the, the door to be able to open a facility in Folsom. We don't know exactly how that's going to all manifest itself, but we know God has given us the way to do it. Amen. And the door to open to, 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 to do a church, to start a church there in Folsom and I believe that God's going to raise one up. It's yes. been long overdue. Yes. Uh, so, you know, God is only limited by our faith. Yes. Only right. limited by what we can see God doing. So, amen. Let's worship the Lord one more time as the worship team uh, is gathered together and begins to worship the Lord. We're not here to be spectators. We're here to be participators and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God bless you.
to tell the devil today. Today, 
Let the Lord bless your sacrificial giving. Our online guests can give to the giving tab at www.dtabupci.org. Now, will you bow your heads, please? Lord Jesus, please bless these tithes and offerings for your servants. Bless our people today for all that they do. Multiply this offering and use it for your kingdom. Help us to give from our hearts with joy. Bless those who do not have to give. Protect your people and place a hedge around our family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may bring your tithes and offerings to the front at this time. Thank you very much.
shout Jesus from the mountain. Don't ever give up. Jesus in the streets. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus in the darkness. Over every I'm going to shout for Jesus for my
what the mercy of God can do. I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad.
I worship you, Jesus. I give you thanks, Lord. You've been good to me. Hallelujah. I said he's been good to me. I don't know about you. Is everything right in my life? No, but he's been good to me. Have I always felt good in my body? No, but he's been good to me. Can I always pay my bills? No, but he's always been good to me. Hallelujah. Do I always, hallelujah, feel great in my relationships? No, but he's been good to me. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. I said can't nobody do me like Jesus can. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you to the worship team and all of those that endeavor to work hard in the church. Making sure the church looks nice and coffee's made for our gifts and, and all of that wonderful thing. And I thank God for it. Amen. We don't just, things don't just happen. Right. Hallelujah. Things don't just happen. Somebody Amen. cleans those floors. Somebody makes it look nice to where everybody can enjoy it. Amen? Amen. And I'm so glad to know that God is still on the throne. Amen. And God is still in control. Amen. Hallelujah. God is still in control. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's not worried about what you're going through. You might be worried about it, but God's not worried about it. Hallelujah. You might not understand what's going to happen tomorrow, but God's not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Matter of fact, he says, take no thought for tomorrow. Exactly. Why does he say that? Because sufficient for the day 
is the evil thereof. You got enough garbage to deal with for today. Don't you take a thought for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We got enough to think about right now. But he said, I'm already taking care of tomorrow. And matter of fact, I'm already in tomorrow while you're waiting for it today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to go in your reading today. I want to go before you just to the book of Genesis chapter 19. I'm only going to read one verse in the beginning here. Look at your neighbor and say, you look good in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I promise you, you look a lot better in the house of the Lord than you do on a bar stool. <laughs> after a couple drinks, you might think they look good. The garbage can starts looking good after a couple drinks. But in the house of the Lord, we're sober and we still know we look good in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24. I've got about seven pages of notes and I'm going to try to put it in about 15 minutes. So you guys just bear with me and... Uh, I said I'm going to try. Don't hold me to it, but I'm going to try to put it in a, in, in a... I'm going to try to respect your time, but the Lord has given me a word, I believe, for the church. Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24 said, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Then the Lord reigned unto Sodom, upon Sodom, and upon Gomorrah, brimstone, and fire. Look at your neighbor and say, it wasn't water. It wasn't water. From the Lord out of heaven. You may be seated. I'm going to attempt to preach with the help of the Lord to you for a few moments tonight on this simple subject, when the fire falls. When the fire falls. Falls. How many knows that God is not found in the smoke, but he's found in the fire? As a matter of fact, he is the fire. God wasn't nervous when the three Hebrew children had the big, strong, burly men, the strongest that the king had. And they took them and they climbed the stairs with them bound and threw them in the furnace. He wasn't nervous when the fire was so hot from the furnace that it killed the men that threw the three Hebrew children into the furnace. He wasn't nervous as they fell through the flames. He wasn't nervous as they hit the bottom of the furnace. Why? Because he knows that I'm in the fire and I'm in the flood. I'm in the rain and I'm in the sunshine. I'm in the thunder and I'm in the lightning. I'm in the rainbow and I, I said, come on somebody. I'm in the good days and I'm in the bad days. I'm here when you're sick and I'm here when you're well. I'm here when things are good and I'm here when things are bad. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis chapter 22. It's 518 times, by the way, that the Bible mentions the word fire in your King James Version for all of you people who were just dying to know that. Uh, Genesis 22, verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And God and Abraham got in the spirit and spoke figuratively and literally at the same time. He spoke currently and he spoke prophetically at the same time. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went both of them together. How many know he didn't just put a ram in the thicket, but Jesus Christ himself made a body and stepped down inside of it and truly was God in Christ in the flesh. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. He made a body. He stepped down in it. He walked among us for three and a half years. 
He felt everything that we've ever felt. He went through everything we've ever went through. Why? So he could say, I've been there and I overcame it. What would Jesus tell us? How did you make it? I was an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I did it so I could tell you that you can too. Amen. Amen. Exodus 3 and 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Right. Right. Exodus 9 and 23. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hail. And the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Exodus 9 and 24. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. Very grievous such as there was none like it in all of the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Exodus 13 and 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. And by the night in a pillar of fire to give them light and to go day and night. They didn't have to stop in the day. They didn't have to stop in the nighttime. They could just keep on marching toward the promise of God. Hallelujah. If I can't see in the night, if I'm going through the darkest trial of my life, I serve a God who is a consuming fire that is able to light up the atmosphere where I'm at and darkness has to leave at the mention of the name of Jesus. Exodus 9 and 17. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. Amen. And the sight, Exodus 24 and 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Joshua 13 and 14, only unto the tribes of Levi, he gave none inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord, God of Israel, made by fire, are their inheritance. As he said, Unto them. I'm going to tell you why Levi didn't get an inheritance uh, except for the sacrifices that were made unto fire. Because he understood uh, that he inhabits the praises uh, of his people. And when the Levites begin to do the priesthood rites uh, and begin to worship the Lord uh, and begin to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. God inhabited the praises of his people. And he said, It may seem like you didn't get a birthright, uh, but I'm going to tell you, I get gave you the greatest birthright because where I am everything that I bring comes with me. Amen. What an inheritance they received. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 27. Behold the name of the Lord cometh from far burning with his angel and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation and his tongue as a devouring fire. Isaiah 31 and 9 and he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace is in Jerusalem. We do not fear as the church of the living God, uh, fire walkers. Uh, we are fire work walkers, so we don't fear the fire and we hate the cold. Uh, hallelujah. God, God said, I'd rather you be hot. Or I would rather you be cold than to be lukewarm. Because if you're just middle ground, if you're just in the middle, I'll spew you out of my mouth and spit you out of my mouth like a bad gumbo. I will get rid of you. I would rather you be one way or be the other. I wish somebody have a made up mind in Deliverance Tabernacle. I'm either going to serve the Lord or I'm going to serve the world. But he said, if you're in the middle, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I won't, I won't deal with that. Hallelujah, praise God. Isaiah 43 and 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be, be, be with thee. And through the rivers, thou shalt not overflow me, uh, thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. The fire never worries about the fire burning the fire. Right. <laughs> I said the fire never worries about the fire burning the fire. Fire feeds fire. Right. You know what else feeds fire? 
dry fuel. You put some dry wood or some dry kindling on a fire and you begin to hear it begin to pop and you begin to hear, oh, hallelujah. You put some dry things, some things that haven't had water for a while in their lives. You just need to get on the fire, baby. You just need to let the Lord consume you. Where I'm walking right now, preacher, it's a dry place. It's a place that's desolate. It's a place that's alone. I'm in the middle of a desert. You better find a fire. You're looking for water, but God said, I'm the fire and I will consume you if you will fall in me. Joel chapter 2 verse 29 through 31 and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit and I will show wonders in the heaven and in earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Malachi 3 and 2 said but who may abide in the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. Acts chapter 2 in verse 1 once said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a Russian mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Can we praise the Lord for what He's doing? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. (laughs) Acts chapter 28, verse 2. Paul was on a journey. And the barbarous people showed up uh, us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire. And received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. He's trying to do a good thing. He's trying to work for God. He's trying to do good and not be lazy and help them out in the middle of their mercy. And what happens in the middle of his trying to do good? There came a viper out of the heat and fastened upon his head. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his head, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and he felt no harm. I've got a word from the Lord for somebody. It seems like every time you try to start taking one step toward God, it seems like you take two steps backwards. Every time you start trying to move toward God, it seems like everything falls apart, and all your life starts spinning, and everything goes crazy in your life uh, when you start to dedicate yourself to God uh, when you begin to try to do something for the church and for the kingdom of God it seems like a snake comes out of your life oh I wish somebody would help me tonight it seems like a snake shows its head can I give you a word that snake was there the whole time but when you begin to turn the heat up I said when you begin to turn the heat up Things that are hidden in your life will begin to be revealed. What has been swept under the rug will work its way out in your life. What has been hiding in the bushes will begin to show its ugly head. I'm going to tell you what, don't turn down the furnace. Turn it up! Turn it up to where it burns up every snake in your life. Oh, somebody needs to shake something off in the fire tonight. Somebody needs to shake something off in the fire tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. No place in the scripture does it ever say they turned on the darkness and things were revealed. No, darkness hides evil. Darkness hides things that are not as though they should be. Darkness hides those little things that we don't want anybody else to see. But when God turns the light on, 
when the light comes in our life? Why is it we can feel so good about ourselves when we're in the world and when we're partying on Bourbon Street and when we're clubbing every weekend and all our friends uh, of the peanut gallery tells us, oh, you're doing great, you're doing wonderful. Let's do it all over again. I'm plastered out of my mind. I don't even know what I did last night. My wallet's empty and so is my bed. And there's, I'm just by myself. I'm throwing up everything I've got. I'm throwing up my guts. I'm wasted because of the drugs I did. But my, my friends call me and say, man, wasn't that a good time? I don't remember it. But oh, wasn't that a good time? And we pat each other on the back. And they do it the next week. And the next week. And the next week. But can I tell you, somebody out there is tired of the same old, same old. They're tired of waking up and marching to the devil's drum. They're tired of living in darkness. And somebody says, can I get a light, somebody? Can anybody shine the light of God? Can somebody turn the fire off? Can so oh, I'm so cold. I'm shivering over here in the darkness. I don't have enough clothes to put on. I'm tired of this cold world. I'm tired of feeling alone. I'm tired of feeling alone. I'm tired of feeling isolated. I'm tired of feeling less than. I'm tired of feeling neglected. I'm tired of my friends saying they'll come through for me. But whenever I need them to come through for me and I need them and I'm at my lowest, uh, I don't get a phone call from anybody who's supposed to be my friend. Uh, I'm tired of when I'm going through my marriage breaking up. Uh, I'm tired of there not being anybody that's there for me, that loves me. Uh, I'm tired of when my finances, when I, I got the checkbook out and the balance says negative and I still got bills to pay and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm tired of being cold out here in the dark. Somebody can you show me the light? Somebody can you bring the fire? Somebody can you bring me some warmth? Somebody can you huddle with me? Somebody I don't smell too good but you can you give me a hug? I don't look too good but can you look beyond what I look like now and can you see what I will be when God gets done with me will you look beyond your flesh and will you look in the spirit oh the Holy Ghost is in this place whether you feel it or not God's stretching us God's changing us God says I'm tired of you being lukewarm I'm tired of you just want to stay in the middle where everybody else is is there anybody who wants to come out uh, from the darkness and you want to you wanna be a light producer? I don't want to just be kindling on the fire of God. I want to become fire all of myself uh, because God channels through me and allows me to be a conduit of His warmth and of His mercy and of His grace. God is trying to get us uh, to be conduits of mercy to a world who feels so destroyed and feels so alone and who feels so neglected and COVID has made a lot of them not even want to come out of their houses. Right. Maybe you're in the sound of my voice. Maybe you're not here in the sanctuary tonight. Maybe you're in your living room and you could just slip up a head toward a hand toward God right now and say, God, I'm tired of being cold. I'm tired of it snowing in my house. I'm tired of icicles hanging off my head in my house. I'm tired of always crying myself to sleep. Don't you dare think God hasn't seen you cry yourself to sleep. Tears rolling down my face and nobody sees you. I'm going to tell you what. Humans, we're not real good at seeing things. We have to, we have to be almost be hit in the head by a beam to pay attention. But when it comes to God, He sees everything you're going through. Amen. Amen. Say, preacher, I'm going through things I can't even tell people about. God already knows. Yes, He does. God only knows what you've been through. God only knows what they say about you. God only knows. But there's a kind of God that God only knows. God only knows what you will become. God only knows who you're going to win for God. 
God only knows what you're going to do in your life. If God be for me, who can be against me? It don't matter who lines up against me. It don't matter who lines up as my enemy. If I've got the Lord, if God is on my side, it doesn't matter what the darkness looks like. If I've got the light of the Holy Ghost inside of me, there's no darkness. It begins to flee at the mention of the name of Jesus. My troubles don't seem so bad when God comes in the room. My problems don't seem so huge when God God comes in the room. Hallelujah. Everything doesn't overwhelm me when God comes in Amen. the room. Amen. Every man's work will be made manifest. 1 Corinthians 3 and 13. Right. For in the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. In the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it. Yeah. That's it. Amen. You know, you can do the right thing for the wrong reason. Yes, you can. Right. Yes, you can. And you can also do the wrong thing for the right reason. Yeah. God can measure the intents of our hearts. We may fall right on our face trying to do something for the will of God. You think he laughs at us when we do that? No, he does not. He sees that we're trying to work for him. He sees that we're trying to do. You know what? I'm your pastor. I'm going to be 100% transparent tonight. There have been times in this week when I just wish somebody would have come and hugged me. See, you're surrounded by, you got a family pastor, you got a church. But there's times we go through things we can't even tell people. Right. That's right. That we just wish somebody would hug us. Yes. Come on. That we just wish somebody would turn a light on in our lives. Yeah. That we just wish somebody could bring the fire. Yes, Jesus. How many times has God told us to pick up the phone and call somebody else in the church? And we didn't do it because of our pride. Come on. What if they're fine? If I'm fine, I like to hear from you anyway. That's it. Yes. But if I'm down, sometimes the difference of hearing your voice or not might make the difference in my day. Makes me get my chin up off the ground and make me not have thoughts that I shouldn't have. Right? Hebrews 12 and 29 tells us that our God is a consuming fire. Amen. You know what I loved about the fiery furnace is that the only thing that was consumed in there were the things that bound them. Right. That's right. That's right. They couldn't even tell they'd been in the fire because their hair and their clothing didn't smell like smoke. Right. <laughs> because they really weren't in the fire. The King Nebuchadnezzar said. Right. They were inside the fire of God. Right. That only burns off the things that are going to bind you. Right. The fire of God only buying hope. It only burns off the things that hold you back. The fire of God only burns off the things that distract you. The fire of God is not going to hurt you, baby. And you might as well die right in the fire of God. Hallelujah. He is going to burn everything that would hinder you getting closer to Him. He'll burn off everything that would try to stop you. But He will not harm you. Because the kind of fire, that spiritual fire. Woo! Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All my chains are gone. My chains are gone. I've been set free. Ha! Hallelujah. I'm alive to tell the story of how I overcome. Hallelujah. Because of His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It was His goodness. It was His mercy. And it was the power of the blood. First Peter 1 and 7. And I'm getting ready to close. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth. Gold has an incinerating temperature. Yes, it does. Yes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read that again. Somebody needs to look at your trials a little bit different. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold. 
that perisheth. Though it be tried by fire. Though what's it? Your faith is going to be tried by fire. If it hasn't happened yet, baby, hold on for the ride. Put your seatbelt on. Because it will be tried. Your faith will be tested. Your faith will be tried. Your life will be shaken up at some point. I remember years ago, Bishop Donald Bryan standing in this pulpit when God decided, for whatever reason, I don't know, to take my child. But three months old, and I never forgot what he preached. He preached that there's always going to be the trial of your faith. We all go through trials. But somewhere in your life, there's going to be a testing like when God tested Abraham and Isaac. And he brought them up the mountain. The promise that God had given them. The promise that took his entire life to become real. To become his, his legacy was on the line. His dream, his vision, his future. He hauled up that mountain in obedience to God. Already believing that God would provide himself a sacrifice. He had not seen the ram in the thicket yet. But when his son said, he wasn't stupid. Isaac said, there's the wood. There's the fire. But where's the sacrifice? We loved all this up here, God. The only thing I don't see is the lamb. God will provide himself a lamb. He will provide himself a lamb. When he went to Calvary, he provided himself a lamb. Nobody else was perfect. Nobody else had ever resisted sin all their life. Nobody else had been like Jesus was. But he said, I'm going to see a brother or a sister who's going to be in Deliverance Tabernacle in October of 2022 that's going to need my mercy, that's going to need my grace, that's going to need to fall upon my judgment or lack thereof, and going to need to cry out, God, I'm not worthy, but do you have forgiveness for this old sinner? This wretch that I am, can you somehow forgive me? And God's going to say, I got a lamb for that. I was a lamb for that. I couldn't find one anywhere, so I made myself a body. And I became a lamb. Revelations 3 and 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich in white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve. That thou mayest see. The Lord spoke to me when I was reading this. And he said anoint your eyes with oil. Anoint your eyes with the anointing. See through things the way that God Revelations 21 and 8, but the fearful and unbeliever thing and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's talking about uh, just about all the sins we could represent anywhere in here. He, he covered the whole basis. What is he saying? That all of us are going to go to hell? No, he's going to say the ones that refuse my mercy. Yes, the ones that refuse my grace. How bad is your sin? Jesus said this and it covers it all. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. I know he said these King James versions said that. Jesus didn't say that. He, but he said for you. But I killed somebody. It was for you. But I did this. It was for you. But I cheated on my IRS taxes. It was for you. No matter what you've done. God said that when there was more sin, when sin did abound, it it heaped. Sin was overflowing. He said, then I don't have enough grace for that. No. He said, my grace did much more about my sins of 90 God says I got a hundred of grace for you you've never done anything you hear me 
You've never done anything or went too far away from God's grace that he's not reaching for you right now. You feel the Holy Ghost reaching. Some of us feel him reaching for us right now like a hook inside of our heart pulling us to him. You've not went too far. There are hundreds if not thousands of people in this surrounding community who want exactly what you have. There are hundreds of people in Folsom, Louisiana that want exactly what you have. We don't know who they are yet, but I know a couple of them. But they don't know about your testimony. They don't know what God brought you to. But if anybody could say, we used to sing a song a long time ago, Lord, set me a fire. Make me a plane for you. Millions are lost, though you paid the cost. You paid the cost that I might be saved. Hallelujah. Set me a burning. Jeremiah said it like this. It's fire shut up in my bones. He said, I would not. I said to myself, I will not speak. I'm not going to say this anymore. I'm Jeremiah, quite frankly, probably got tired of preaching negative all the time. That's all he could say because God spoke it in his life, in his mouth. And he said, I'm not going to do it anymore. I will not say these things. But then when he tried to keep his mouth closed, he could not hold it in because it was like a fire shut up in his bones. He had to say what God was saying. You and I have an easy message. We get to tell people about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We get to tell them that there's a merciful God that loves them more than their sin. That His mercy is deeper than the ocean. More broad than the galaxy. Hallelujah, it's warmer than the sun. Hallelujah, it goes beyond any sin that they've ever committed. His grace is reaching. This altar is open. If you're watching us remotely, you can make your living room right now a house of prayer. You can make your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen an altar right now. God said, you build the altar and I'll provide the fire. You build the altar and I'll provide the fire. I've already provided the sacrifice. Hallelujah. If God's dealing with your heart, would you come today? Would you come, sir? Would you come, ma'am? Would you come, son, daughter, grandma, aunt, uncle? Would you come and just let the Lord reach you? Let the Lord touch you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah.